Cody? Essie. Essie. Slick. Slick. I will provide weather status. Weather is green, we're getting no issues. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Oh. Wow, look at that plume. Advancements in rocket technology have dramatically reduced the cost of launching spacecraft into orbit. And as more and more nations around the world enter the space race, hundreds of new satellites have been added to an increasingly crowded low Earth orbit. These satellites are critical for communications, GPS, commerce, and even the internet. But with more than a half a million objects now circling the Earth at incredible speeds, the risk of collision in space is rapidly growing. The threat of debris in key orbits around the Earth is a very real and serious issue. The focus of this hearing is how to prevent a real-life gravity. The blockbuster movie Gravity brought onto the public radar the threat of debris to satellites and even space shuttles in orbit. And while the plot was science fiction, the threat it depicted is very real. And now, one of the Air Force's most important missions. Dr. David Hardy has seen just how hard that mission is after decades of experience designing satellite technology and overseeing the military's space capabilities. Could you just put kind of in perspective how much energy the space debris has? Well, you know, if you take a ball bearing, a standard ball bearing about that size, and if it's going at an orbital velocity of 17,500, miles per hour, that has as much energy as an SUV going 70 miles per hour. Yeah. So if you think of something that small having that much energy, think how much something like this would have. Think what happens when it collides with something at those velocities. Yeah. Thousands of, space, of pieces. Thousands of pieces of debris. And because of the dire threat each piece of space debris poses, the Air Force needs to know exactly where each object is. So what is this facility's kind of main purpose? This is one of Air Force's main research facilities. We want to know where everything is. We want to have some idea of what it does. And we want to be able to track it if it changes what it does. So this is a large telescope facility, which allows us to do very unique research in all of those areas. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful looking telescope, isn't it? Telescope has to move pretty fast in order to track objects in Earth orbit much more quickly. But we actively track some tens of thousands of objects right now. From a centimeter or a few centimeters up, there are quite a few present objects that we track on a daily basis. And the reason for that is to make sure uh, we knew whether or not it was going to collide with something. We've actually had collisions. There's the case of Cosmos colliding with an iridium, neither of which uh, knew that was going to happen, which produced, you know, tens of thousands of pieces of debris. There are examples of relatively small pieces of debris that have impacted the space station that have produced worrisome amounts of damage. Do you think there is a possibility that if you created enough debris in a certain orbit, you could make it unusable? One can calculate how much that is. This catastrophic chain reaction could create a debris field so massive that it would destroy the satellite constellations critical to our digital way of life and block new space missions from even entering orbit, effectively locking humanity out of space. Yet at the same time, major nations are pushing for space dominance and developing specialized weapons for a whole new theater of war. This is leading some scientists to sound the alarm that when space junk strikes a military satellite, it could be mistaken for something far worse. An intentional offensive strike and an act of war. We've had sort of unbridled use of space for a long time and our adversaries are very aware of that. Yes. And they seek to equalize, you know, for the future. Yeah, and they're playing catch up. And... They're playing catch up and they're, they're being quite quite uh, determined about that catch-up. For countries like Russia and China, playing catch-up to American dominance in orbit actually means preparing for a war in space. 
，曾有评论说 ，X 三七 B 也许预示着电影《星球大战》当中战机在太空中格斗的场景，不久以后就会出现。And at the Pentagon, the head of the United States Air Force, Heather Wilson, warns that such attacks are already being tested. We would definitely say space is becoming, if it's not already, a contested、uh, environment. Not everyone who is in space is there for peaceful, benign purposes. In 2007, the Chinese launched an anti-satellite weapon and destroyed one of its own dead weather satellites,、mm -hmm. and put about 3,000 pieces of debris into orbit. That was a pretty significant message to the world. Last year, the Russians announced that they had launched a satellite to be able to. Repair satellites on orbit. Well, if you've got an arm on there that can repair a satellite on orbit, the question is whose satellite are you seeking to repair?、Um, it means you're maneuvering something to come into close proximity with someone else and touch it.、Um, that's a concern. The development of satellite killers like these could jeopardize America's ability to engage in a new conflict. Be very hard to fight a modern war without space assets, right? Yes. I mean, you talk about early warning for ballistic missile launches. You talk about communications, precision guidance. All those things require space. I can't think of certainly a military mission、uh, that isn't enabled by space today.、Uh, and likewise, so much of our commerce is now enabled by space. The little blue dot on your phone. Is provided by the United States Air Force.、Right. Uh, GPS was developed and is operated by the United States Air Force for the world. So a billion people use that every day for the whole financial system,、mm -hmm. for the stock market. So it's extremely important that it be protected and to make very clear to someone who would wish us harm that that we have the capability to defend ourselves. The United States military is training for the opening shots of the next potential war by learning how to block enemies from trying to jam satellites and knock out America's space advantage. So we're the 527th Space Aggressor Squadron, basically professional bad guys. They're training the U.S. military on how our adversaries would attack U.S. space assets. Two megs. Okay. They're basically looking for satellite communication links. They want to jam those signals so that we cannot talk to, for example, our commander on the battlefield. All right, we're effective jamming on signals one through five. No comms being passed.、Somebody、all right, we have jammed all signals. Thank you. What is the point of doing exercise like this? The purpose is we use a lot of satellite communication in the military, and we like to train our forces, our friendly forces, to deal with jamming. And what better way to learn than to go through it yourself, live fire in an exercise environment? That way, it doesn't harm anybody, and、uh, they can learn to to create、uh, tactics and, and procedures to work around the jamming. Have we seen examples of adversaries using these kind of、uh, jamming techniques?、Uh, one that comes to mind first is、uh, Saddam Hussein using a GPS. GPS jamming. They protected his palace from、uh, incoming GPS-aided munitions. This is really kind of the idea of,、uh, you know, fighting a, a war in space, so to speak, from the ground. Yeah, yeah, and, and who knows? I mean, it could go into space in the future. And if a war in space were to break out, the highly classified command JSPOC, or the Joint Space Operations Center, is a first line of defense. So this is JSPOC. This is the Joint Space Operations Center. After some of the more sensitive workstations were powered down, Lieutenant General David J. Buck invited us inside to see a readiness drill. We have indications of possible imminent anti-satellite missile launch. All right, what are we thinking? Test or exercise? No, sir. It looks like real world. All right, crew, listen up. We got indications of a pending anti-satellite missile launch. Hey, DDO, run a risk analysis. Give me a list of potential targets. Currently, two blue targets are at risk. Sir, 1456 Zulu sensors are reporting possible impact and detonation. We have intel analysts and specialists who are watching the world all the time. Now, our sources and means of how we do that are classified. Along that spectrum of threats, if you will, we see the jamming. You can see things like the kinetic anti-satellite test we just demonstrated for you. You see things like co-orbital threats. Things that are in space in the same orbit as some of our assets. We're tracking them very closely. And let me give you an example, if I could. 2014, a launch occurred, and 
we were tracking one satellite was supposed to be on that, that particular launch. Well, our professionals here in the JSPOC, they were monitoring three objects. One was a satellite, one was a booster, and one was a piece of debris. Well, lo and behold, that piece of debris started to maneuver. Mm. Debris doesn't have power no. light. Debris is not supposed to maneuver. For what purpose? We don't know. We'll keep a close eye on it. Uh, if potential adversaries create a contested or degraded or operational limited environment in space, it could have a negative impact on them as well. That means a war in space could create enough debris to threaten all nation space assets, including those firing the shots. It'd be a bad day to go to war in space. We don't want that. It would be horrible. When you create a debris field in space, it's going to last for decades. And so to keep space open to everyone, the U.S. regularly notifies friends and even potential adversaries when it projects a possible collision in space. We notify companies and countries if a piece of debris is likely to interfere with one of their satellites. So we have this ironic situation where uh, the debris cloud that China created we're in this now odd situation where we actually notify the Chinese when a piece of their debris, their debris. is going to hit one of their satellites. Space is a, a common domain of human endeavor. It never quite developed that way. And I think now we might be on the verge of that, that changing. And as space gets more crowded, what do we as a nation and as a species have to do to ensure that it stays accessible? If everybody recognizes that, that debris is going to be bad for how we use space, and it's for all uses of space, civil, commercial, military, uh, and people have a greater dependence, it'll make them think twice about doing actions in space that will increase debris. Because it will hurt course. everybody. And if space is turned into a new battleground, every nation stands to lose.